One of those beautiful readings we heard in the first reading from the book of First Kings. It's about the famine that was in Israelite. And when the Israelites were facing this famine for so long, they were left with nothing. So also Elijah, the greatest of all the prophets, was left with nothing. And he was in a way telling God, I'm left with nothing. And God Yahweh says to him, go, go to that town and there you will find a woman in the fields and then she will give you. Now look at the aspect of Yahweh, how he is protecting his people. He protects them in such a way that the famine should not destroy them completely, but rather make them learn something out of this famine. He teaches a lesson to them to show how important the needs of each one is. And therefore, Elijah goes into that town and there he finds his widow in Zarephath. And then he comes to her and says, now give me something. First he asks for water. And then she must have said, okay, I'll give you water. Water also was very scarce there. And then he asks, can you bring me a morsel of bread? Then now she has to show what she is and how she is living. Therefore she says, I have very little. But if the Lord is asking me this, I will give it. That is important. The intention of this woman was to give, even though that was the last part of the flour that she had and the little oil that was there in the jug. This is for us to know that she was left with the minimum. And when Elijah comes and asks, she said, okay, actually I wanted to prepare this last part of the flour, make some bread and with the oil have this and after that there is nothing for us. So she says, we are going to make bread, have with the oil and die. Have this bread and die. In other words, they have come to the last thread and they have come to the end of that moment that which they had been living on. Once they finish this flour and the oil, there's nothing that they have to live for. And so she said, we are going to die after this. It's at that time you find Elijah saying, do not fear. He says, go and do what I have said. So she goes and does the jar of flour. She spends it off and the jug of oil, she empties it and then she comes and gives it to Elijah. And Elijah says, you just empty it. She empties the jug and the jar. And after that, when she goes to look into the jar and the jug, there is again flour there, there is again oil in the jug. And Elijah says, you will receive sufficient flour in your jug, in your jar, and sufficient oil in your jug, till you get your rains. And the promise comes to fulfillment because this little part of what this woman did was enough for God to answer all that she wanted. So you and I should learn from this part to empty even if it is that little part that which is remaining with us and to empty so that he fills us. Unless I empty, how will I empty? I give this woman who was surviving with that little flour and oil 
for herself and for her son, gives it off, empties herself, empties her kitchen, empties all the provisions possible, and there is nothing for them to live on. But God pours into her kitchen, into all that she had, till the rains came. This is the blessing that you will receive when you give, when you empty yourself. And therefore we find Jesus Christ coming to tell us how important it is to give. Today, my dear friends, in this gospel reading, every year we celebrate the Dalit Christian Sunday. The Dalit Christian Sunday is nothing but to remind each one of you that every Dalit is deprived of their rights. What is that? Many of you will not know. When an SEOBC become a Christian because they have accepted Christianity, their faith in the previous life is gone. But their caste will not be gone. The caste remains. Because they have converted to Christianity, the caste will also not be converted. And that is the reason why the government in India does not give them because they have left one caste and accepted another religion and therefore if you have accepted that religion, you are also abandoning your caste. Which means the rights that they were receiving as Dalits or BC or SC are not given to them. That is why the church celebrates today the Dalit Christian Sunday for each one of us also to know like this woman who has given away everything, emptying herself to be filled in, we on the other hand also should be able to give ourselves for people who are deprived of their rights. It's not only money, it's also that part of being a person who can go and help a Dalit Christian and also stand for them. And that is how their famine in their life, being deprived by the government, may be met. And that is how we come to the gospel where this widow who is there and who puts all that she has with herself. And Jesus makes it a point to tell his disciples, look at that widow. She has given all that she had to live on. And she has put all that in the treasury of the temple. In other words, it is important, my dear friends, that we need to learn to give. How will we give? Well, today's first reading and the gospel will tell us about these women and someone has eliminated four different types of giving. Four different types of giving. The first giving is grudge giving. I hate to part with my hundred rupee note, but I will. That is a grudge giving. I will give. But, you know, I don't like to give it. But since you are asking it, I will give it. We carry a grudge after giving. That is how sometimes when we want to give, we have a grudge within ourselves. The second giver is shame giving. I must, in a way when I am giving, match that other family. What he is giving, I will give more. After seeing what he is giving, then only I will give little more. And that is how a shameful giver is, that he wants to match. I must be noted. This church stands because of me. This house stands because of me. No. This is a shame giver. The third aspect is a calculative giver. We part with money, with what we have, very generously. 
but very calculating. God, I am giving this. You must give me a new house. God, I am praying for this. You must give me by all means. We go to St. Anthony's shrine and say, St. Anthony, I will give you a hundred bread. If only you give me this. And we promise. And we are here very calculative in our giving. Because I am asking this and if you give me this, I am going to give you this. This calculative giving sometimes destroys us. But the last, the fourth giver is thanksgiving. The one with a thankful heart gives. I will part my funds precisely because God has wonderfully blessed me with enough and more. Like the widow in today's gospel reading. With enough and more only the two copper coins. Yes, it is enough and more for her. But she parts with that. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, we see that we are all sometimes caught up with a lot of money. Uh, mind if we break our brains. No, if I break your brain and see what is there, it will be full of money. Because we are always thinking about money. What is money? Money is a servant. What is money? Money is a servant. Put your hand in the pocket, your servant is there. You treat money as a servant. You see that you make the money subject to you. You don't make money the master of your life. It will destroy you. And that is the reason why you and I should learn that money cannot rule me. I will rule money. I will see how it will obey me. I will do what I want to do and then it has to obey. Because people say money makes us talk. But yes, look at this woman. She made Jesus talk by putting all that she had. You will get the blessing when you give all that you have. Therefore, remember the four givers that I have mentioned today. Because we all love money. It happened in uh, 1939 in San Francisco. They kept one million dollars on a table. And they said, you can carry that money in your hand and take a photo. And that will cost 25 cents. And everybody went, took that money in their hands and took photos in 1939. Today we will all take selfies with that money in our hands. Does it make you rich? Because you are holding on to this money? It only makes you poor by 25 cents. And therefore, sometimes the world will make us poor by the attractions of money that is there. And it will make you hold it for just 25 cents and you become poorer by 25 cents. Don't ever be fooled or rob the poor with such little thoughts. The story of the widow, my dear friends, only culminates a series of beautiful things that have happened biblically in the Gospels. How they have abandoned false securities in the presence of God. Because you find that they have given up the false security. There are these false securities in this world on which we hang on and we destroy our life, our future. I will take you to what happened to the Magi. They went there, they opened their gifts, they laid it before the child Jesus and they left everything there and went away. Because they knew those were the false securities and the securities that are there in this world are all false in the presence of God. And the second aspect that we see is the disciples. When Jesus says, come follow me, they leave their father, they leave their boats and nets, they leave their hired men. 
because they were living in false security. In the presence of God they leave everything and follow Jesus. We also see the tax collector, Matthew, who was at the counter, collecting so much of money, making a lot of commission. And when Jesus says, follow me, he leaves all these false securities in which he was surviving and leaves it in the presence of God and follows Jesus. We see Zacchaeus also doing the same. He believed in all these securities. But he later on leaves them in the presence of God and says, I will give half of my property to the poor. We also see what happened to Bathemus, a blind man, an ordinary blind man, who left all his clothes there, came running to Jesus. He came naked in a way to Jesus to say, I need sight. He believed in the clothes that he had on, but he left all his clothes in the presence of God to receive that great blessing of Jesus. Finally, the Samaritan woman at the well who came with a jar, who left that jar at the well, empty jar, she left her past stories there in the presence of God. And she became a proclaimer for Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, a question that we can all ask ourselves is, what is that I am still holding on to? What is that I am still holding on to that prevents me from totally surrendering to God? Amen. Now we have the mic box coming around. How many of you are going to be like that widow? Are we going to hold on to many things still? Amen. Let us all stand for the creed.